Tonight, we have a much deeper sense of the legal peril facing Donald Trump and the reason it has taken so long to get to this moment, thanks to a pair of stunning new revelations. Breaking earlier today, Lanny Davis, Michael Cohen's attorney, who we're going to speak to with uh, in just a few moments, confirmed to Axios that his client provided Manhattan prosecutors with documentation about a Trump hush money payment made to a second woman who claims to have had a past affair with him. Now, that suggests the case by District Attorney Alvin Bragg could actually be broader than the Stormy Daniels payment. Also breaking, former Manhattan District Attorney Cy Vance, pressed about why Trump wasn't charged earlier in this hush money case, told MSNBC Today that he was asked to stand down by his then bosses. We're looking at the so-called hush money payment issue. And then we learned from the Southern District of New York uh, that they asked us to stand down. And by stand down, I mean they were communicating that they had this ongoing investigation and they wished that we uh, put our efforts on hold um, while they completed their investigation. And I felt that was appropriate for me uh, to press the pause button. And so for the course of probably more than a year and a half, that's what we did. Uh, I was surprised after Michael Cohen pleaded guilty that the investigation from the Southern District on that issue did not go forward. So this request, this request to stand down, came under the Trump Justice Department. And to be clear here, we don't know exactly why or what caused the Southern District of New York to not take any action. And we have no direct evidence that there was political interference in the case. But here's what we do know. We know from the public record that Donald Trump has a penchant for attempting to interfere in investigations that pose a threat to him. We also know that Trump has a penchant for putting pressure on the Southern District of New York. After all, Trump's first attorney general, Jeff Sessions, fired then U.S. Attorney General Preet Bharara from his role overseeing the Southern District after he refused a request to resign. And months later, uh, Bharara said he believed that if he had stayed, Donald Trump would have asked him, quote, to do something inappropriate. And years later, the Trump appointee to oversee the Southern District of New York, Jeffrey Berman, released a book. And in that book, he alleged that Trump sought to use the U.S. attorney's office to support Trump politically and pursue his critics, even pushing the office to open a criminal investigation of former Secretary of State John Kerry. So while we can't totally connect the dots, maybe you, the audience, can. A short time ago, I spoke about these developments and a whole lot more with Michael Cohen's attorney, Lanny Davis. Watch. Lanny Davis, thank you so much for joining us. Um, this morning, former Manhattan DA Cy Vance revealed to NBC News that he was told to, quote, stand down on the Trump hush money investigation uh, by the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District. Vance went on to say that after Michael Cohen pleaded guilty, he was somewhat surprised that the federal government did not proceed on the areas in which it had asked him to stand down. What is your reaction to that revelation? What do you make of that? Well, first of all, the Southern District could not prosecute a sitting president under the Justice Department's policy. But they did some very strange things that I believe an inspector general of the Justice Department should consider looking into. For example, Jeffrey Berman, the former U.S. attorney, said that the attorney general of the United States, uh, I think the assumption would be that Mr. Trump directed him to do this or knew he was doing it, called Jeffrey Berman and asked for a reversal of the Michael Cohen guilty plea. There are other things I could mention that are quite uh, problematical as to the conduct of the Southern District, including abusing Mr. Cohn on a Friday afternoon, telling his lawyer if he doesn't plead guilty to all these counts, including not even having a chance to look at the tax issues, by Monday morning, so from Friday afternoon when things are shut down to Monday morning, if you don't plead guilty now, we're going to indict you on Monday morning, including your wife. There's something abusive about that that I at least raise a question that should be looked into by the inspector general of the Justice Department. And you've also revealed, uh, Lanny, that your client, Michael Cohen, had provided Manhattan prosecutors with documents related to hush money payments made to a second woman who claims to have had an affair with Donald Trump. Uh, can you tell us who is that woman and what are the potential implications for Alvin Bragg's case if there are two women and multiple hush money payments at its center? 
Well, again, trying to be very careful about what I can or can't comment on, uh, it is a matter of public record that the Southern District prosecutors under Donald Trump stated in writing that Trump directed Michael Cohen to pay the hush money payments, and then they called that a serious crime impairing our democracy in so many words. So what I can tell you is that Michael was forced to plead to a second crime involving Karen McDougal. Even though he did not pay any money in that situation, that money exchange occurred between the National Enquirer and Karen McDougal to keep her quiet before the election. But Mr. Trump was involved in that understanding that he would repay the National Enquirer that 150000 Now, Michael did get accused of papering that transaction, but he pled guilty to that transaction. So that's the best answer I can tell you, that that transaction involving Karen McDougal is the second crime. And there are witnesses to that crime that are not just Michael Cohn and corroborating detailed documentation to that crime as well. Uh, as I mentioned, um, and others have described Michael Cohen as the star witness of this case, you certainly know the ins and outs better than almost anyone. How would you respond to some of the criticism that this is a potentially weak indictment, that it involves a, quote, unquote, untested legal theory that might be politically motivated? Well, first of all, let me deal with the weakness on facts. That's completely speculated by people who don't know a thing. <laughs> I'm in the room all the time for many meetings, at least seven with this particular group of prosecutors, and have talked to Michael countless hours. I know what the facts are in the case. And it's substantiated by documents, emails, text messages, telephone calls. It's a very strong factual case coming down to one question to the jury. Was Donald Trump motivated in any way by politics when he directed Michael Cohen to pay the $130,000 and not connected to him right before the election with a promise to be repaid? And he did repay them while he was president of the United States from his personal checking account. So that is the question for the jury to decide. They'll have to decide whether Michael Cohen's testimony that there was a discussion about the political ramifications and right before the election, within one or two weeks, Mr. Trump directed, directed according to federal prosecutors, not according to Michael Cohen, directed Michael Cohen to pay the money. It's a pretty strong case, factually. On the law, I can only say that there are different statutes in New York that seem to be applicable, and I can assure you that the DA and the prosecutors have studied this question and do not believe the judge will dismiss the case without allowing the jury to decide the basic facts based on the law. You have said that um, Michael Cohen would be a key witness in the Trump trial. How do you plan to balance the obvious knowledge that uh, he has with the notion that Cohen has lied before and that the Trump team and certainly Trump's lawyers will aim to paint him as a liar? So I haven't heard a single prosecutor, including Cyrus Vance, former district attorney, say that that makes any sense. Mm. Organized crime cases are won by prosecutors, and they put on as witnesses people who have lied and committed crimes. Michael Cohen did lie for 10 years, but he owned those lies and went public in front of a chair Chairman Cummings. And on national and international television, he said, I'm ashamed of my lies. Now I'm telling the truth for my country and my children. And... This is something that a jury will have to decide to weigh Michael's credibility. But I also have already said, if there's a problem with Michael's credibility, you can be sure that he is backed up multiple times with documents, phone calls, emails. So it's not taking his word for anything. It's corroborating everything that he says. Are you at all concerned uh, about threats of violence directed towards Michael Cohen or perhaps even yourself as this case gets underway? So I'd rather not answer uh, that question because I'm told that people who are professionals, uh, that you encourage uh, crazy people if they think you're, uh, you're concerned. But I, I do Fair think enough. that the president of the United States has already shown that he's willing to call a mob to the Capitol and to try to have an insurrection while he's watching TV and not doing a thing to protect even his own vice president. We know that is indisputable, yet no Republican worries about that, yet they say it's a politicization of this uh, particular case by the DA in Manhattan, even though the same facts, the federal prosecutors found that Michael Cohen had to go to jail for the same facts. So I am a little bit concerned about Mr. Trump's uh, willingness to uh, at least, let's say, encourage 
uh, violence. Uh, he said protest, 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 but he didn't say with uh, no violence. And I am worried about Mr. Trump encouraging people to do violence the way he did on January 6th. Uh, Mr. Laney Davis, certainly appreciate your time. Thank you so much for your insights. Best of luck. Thank all. you. I appreciate the invitation. Thank you.